Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Movie Review, episode number 73. Yeah, it's been a little while since I did one. I think it's been like a month since the last one. Let's see. I think it's been like an entire month. Yeah, the last one I did was a review on the Star of the Throne Treason book. Actually, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, December 4th was the last one I did. <clears throat> now, in this one, am I reviewing a Star Trek or Star Wars book? Neither. I'm reviewing a book from a series that I have not reviewed in three years. Why? Well, the kind of reason is because I was initially planning on doing this three years ago, but I got distracted by other things. That's the simple gist of it. I got to check about other things like more comic corners, more movie reviews. Yep. And now I'm at the second book of the Ian Fleming James Bond novels. Yep. I reviewed the first book back, I believe it was in 2016. Yeah, that's when I reviewed the first book basically three years ago. And five months ago I reviewed the third adaptation of it. Of that particular book, it was adapted film. Now here is the original novel, which which was adapted into 1973 film. James Bond, Live and Let Die. Yeah, this is gonna be a different cover image than what you can see for thumbnail because the thumbnail image I found was, was a similar one to what they used for Casino Royale. It's, in my opinion, a bit too inappropriate to show. Because all it is is a naked woman who covers her breast with basically cards. That's the character Solitaire. Yep. By the way, in case you're wondering, are any of the characters left from Bond and M similar to the movie counterparts? Well, in the case of Mr. Big, he is kind of similar to that of his film counterpart. Solitaire is completely different. Like, if you see the film and you read this novel... You probably noticed so right away. Solitaire is depicted. I mean, she's still a telecom reader. She works for Mr. Big. That was basically Yavakota's. That was uh, Dr. Kananga's alias. This one, it kind of is, but they kind of do something different. Now, is there a character named Teehee in here? Yes. Is there anything about him having a claw hand in the novel? No, he doesn't. As a matter of fact, he appears for about two chapters. Before he gets killed off. I'll get to that soon. <clears throat> is Felix Slater the novel? Yes. Yes he is. He is in the novel. M is seen briefly at the beginning. And he appears for like one air time after that. And that's the last you see of M. This book was released like one year after Casino Royale. And this book is 280 pages. It took me a, little, took me a few, couple few days to get through this book. Mm -hmm. Solitaire is depicted. Well. As a prized for Bond to be won. Excuse me, because there are several attempts in the book where Solitaire and Bond want to have sex, but Bond is too injured to make love. Yep. Book starts off, interestingly, with Bond arriving at Dulles Airport. Yep. And he's basically going through customs... And the reason why he's here is actually explained in a flashback that takes place two weeks prior to that, where Bond is summoned to M's office. This is before this, he gets revenge to Felix later, which he rents the previous novel. Yeah, he's some, and basically he's there because apparently someone's found some pirate gold in the Caribbean and selling it on the American black market. Bond's job is to investigate who it is and find out where it's coming from. That's the simple gist of it. Oh yeah, and the guy basically, well, being in charge of it, was... Uh, how should I put this? He's called Mr. Big. It's an alias of his. Apparently he was a OSAS agent in World War II. He was recruited by Smirsch. Death Despised, the Russian version of the Russian, uh, the, the Russian counterpart of the British Secret Service. And they do mention briefly about the scar he got at the, at the end of the previous novel. Apparently it's healing, but it's mentioned just briefly at the beginning, and it's never brought up ever again. Yep, because the Smurf agent who killed Le, Le, Le Chiffre in the previous book, yeah, he carved the letter M in his hand. 
just so anybody who comes across him who is a smart agent know he works MI6. Here, it's like, brief mention, that's it. As a matter of fact, Casino Royale is not even mentioned in here at all. And also, Vespa Lynn, no mention of her at all. Now, what inspired me to do these reviews again, in case you want to forget to Calvin Dice's reviews. Yeah, he reviewed every single one of Ethan Lynn Dominic's. So I figured, though, why not do it myself? This is a book I own. You can tell just by looking at it, this is physically worn. The, the spine looks okay, appearance-wise, but look closely at it. The spine is actually kind of bent because, well, I've been reading it. And <coughs> I got this book roughly about a little over 10 years ago, and I've read it once before, but I felt like reading it again. Mm -hmm. Yep. And basically, in the case of Mr. Big, yeah, he also is able to also claim to be Baron Samity. You are thinking, Baron Samity, when it comes to Live and Die, you think of the character played by Jeffrey Holder. Yes, but here he claims to be Baron Samity. There's no separate character of Baron Samity in this version. Nope, it's Mr. Big. He also claims to be a zombie, even though, oh yeah, in case you're wondering, is his hair black like in the novel? His skin is. His hair, no, they describe him as basically very white-haired, which is kind of odd. Yeah. And, like, you read this novel and you're like, oh, I recognize a couple of these plot points in different Bond movies. Yeah, there's a scene in here which was mentioned. If you, if you read the Felix Slater comic book by Dynamite, you're probably wondering, why is Felix Slater missing an arm for? Read this book and it will basically explain it. Yeah, this happens later on. I'll get to that soon of what, what was going with his arm. Yeah. <clears throat> so Bond goes to Harlem. Yeah, he goes to a few different places. He goes to Harlem. He goes to, he goes to Jacksonville. He goes to St. Petersburg. And then finally, he ends up in Haiti. Actually, no, he ends up in Jamaica. Haiti's mentioned here. Yes. Solitaire is introduced partway into the novel. Yes. And apparently, not only is she a tarot card, apparently she's a telepath. Yes. A Bond girl who is a freaking telepath. In the film, it's similar to this, except that her personality is different than how it is in the novel. Like, oh my gosh, it is so different. And they ascribe her basically... Like, as sort of like a mix between someone who's half black, half white. Yeah, that's how they kind of describe Solitaire. And in case you want to, is Rosie Carver this novel? Nope. Bond has one Bond girl in this whole book. Yeah, that girl he slept with at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, nowhere in this book at all. Yeah, Bond is just basically someone at complete random. And he goes to, he goes to meet with Felix Slater. He's very happy to meet with him. And they get some undercover clothes. And they go to Harlem. And they ask, like, do you, and I ask the butler, like, do you know where Mr. Big is operating tonight? And the, guy, and the waiter says, I have wife and kids. So, no, I'm not telling you. And eventually, Mr. Big... Now, in case you're wondering, the whole thing... Like, like, if you saw the film... Like, in the film, you have it where various people are contacting each other via radio and spying on Bond. Does that happen in the novel? Yes, it does. Yep, that's pulled directly from the novel. That's completely true. Felix Slater is kind of downplaying the movie, yet in the, in the novel, he's got a pretty good, essential supporting role. And... Apparently, Fleming wanted to kill him off with this book, but his American publisher says, No, we like the character. Keep him. So he came back for several years after this. So eventually, he meets Mr. Big in a different scene than how he was meeting him in the film. In the film, it's like almost completely random. He just falls like right down on the table. Here, he and Felix are. Well, he's Felix brought to someplace else or beaten up. Bond is brought before Mr. Big. Asked him why he's here. He tells him he's here to investigate Spanish gold. Brings in solitaire. Like he's like, bring her in. Oh yeah, by the way, the way that some of these his subordinates basically tend to address him is like, yes, sir, boss. Yeah. Or yes. And there's a couple points in the book when I was reading this. I'm like, okay. What the heck is this? It's like the way some of these characters are written to be 
it's like I'm sure this probably is jive, but the way I read it, it looks like freaking gibberish. Like, oh my gosh, I had to basically just breeze to a freaking page because I couldn't understand what the heck these people were saying. And apparently Fleming did not know how people talked. Americans. Yeah, it's particularly very weird. On case you're wondering, is Quarrel in the novel? Yes, he is. Doesn't appear tor until toward the end of the novel. Along with John Stringways, who actually was not included in the live-action version. Nope, he was just included in Doc No, which I think he does appear there. But here, this is where he introduced to him, and the whole thing with Jamaica. Yeah, so... Bond basically meets Solitaire, and she confirms telling the truth, and then Teehee, like in the film, it is, in the film it's Tease, he was going to break his finger. In the novel, he actually breaks his freaking finger. <coughs> and also, apparently, uh, Mr. Big's goon decided to sort of rough up his arms, so, like, they brought him out to simply sort of, in a way, like, be up properly and hand him over. He gets away and he kills three people. He kills Teehee. Yeah, he kills Teehee. And a couple other of Mr. Big's subordinates. And steals a car and gets away. In the context, of Bond escapes because it's comic feels later later. And tells what happens. It's like, he's like, oh, thank God you're okay. Yep. And then, like, like he tells him, like, Okay, we, we got to get out of Harlem really quickly because the FBI do not like the fact we're here. So let's just go quickly. So I'll get you some clothes and we'll head down the jack. We'll head down to Florida. Good. Packs his things. Bond gets a phone call. And it's Solitaire calling him. Yep. Because he admitted this one time. Like, can you help me get away? Bond's like, okay, I'll help you. Yeah, I'm at the corner drunk store, and it's like, okay, maybe at the train station, and, be, and your alias will be Mrs. Bruce. Yes, because, well, they, uh, because Felix has said where his name is John Bruce, and he, she is Mrs. Bruce, or Bryce. So, they take a train, obviously, and unlike in the film, where the train is actually from the end of the film, here it's about close to about halfway through the novel. <coughs> and... They actually kind of switch trains when they get to Jackson, but they do get the to Treasure Island. Yeah, they go to Treasure Island. That is a real place, by the way. And no, there's no treasure there. Yeah, it's a place in the Tampa Bay heart in, the, in Tampa Bay itself. It's it's island in Tampa Bay. Puts on a swanky college, uh, cottage on this island, and he's basically debriefed. And then, of course, well, they run into some more Mr. Big's goons at the St. Pete docks. Yep. Run into a guy called The Robber. Yeah. Seriously. That's what the guy's codename is. The Robber. Oh yeah, and Whisper is in the book, but Whisper is not depicted the same way he picked him. In the film, he's just an overweight guy who just speaks very softly and just basically is, is Kananga's yes man. In the book, he's just basically his communications officer. That's Simply put, what he is. He's also a kind of, Yeah. Basically, I think communication officer slash switchboard operator. And he tells the contact these people in this specific order. He's like... And he's like, yeah, boss. And he pokes, like, take a whole bunch of them and punch them right in. And contacts, like, about ten people. And it span about five minutes. Yep. And by the time Bond and Solitaire get to this college... Lighters happened to see them, and apparently the train they were on actually was attacked and blown up. Though, luckily, no one was on board the, car, the, the the part of the train they were on. Yeah, they had vacated the place, and then, of course, they confront the robber later at the docks. Like, okay, if you're trying to kill me here, I'll basically claim self-defense. Yeah, typical stuff. And then later on, Bond gets to a shootout at a warehouse, and... More of Kenink, more of Mr. Big's goons get killed, and apparently the FBI is not happy with this. Is all that Bond has killed more people in the U.S. on U.S. soil. So basically, he's told get out of the freaking country. But I was like, okay, I'll go to Jamaica, and that's where the last quarter of the book basically is. Jamaica, Jamaica McRae, him and Solitaire go to no problem at all, and <clears throat> then Solitaire is kidnapped later on by. 
Mr. Big Goons. Lighter himself was kidnapped via trap that was sent by him, and he fed him to his frickin' sharks. Yes, Mr. Big has got sharks. Now, this is briefly mentioned in the, the Live and Let Die film. Yeah, and this is where Felix loses his arm and a leg. He loses his left arm. I think he loses part of his leg, but he gets it shot off anyways. And... And his face is disfigured as well. So, yeah, and Leo Noah's like, he ate, uh, I think, in, it's even in the name of a chapter in here. This stuff is a note. He disagreed with something that ate him. Yeah, this happens like roughly halfway through the damn novel. So, in case you're wondering of why in the world, like, like, this book basically explains, if you read the Felix Slater miniseries, if you're only familiar with how Felix Slater picked the film, you probably have no idea he was maimed in the movies. Well, he was maimed in License to Kill. Well, there kind of is a reason for that, because License... Now, you're probably thinking, wait, Felix Slater wasn't maimed in Live and Let Die. He was, uh, he was maimed in License to Kill. There is a reason for that, because this book was actually... Had a couple things happen in this book where it was rated for two other movies. Like... Him getting maimed and the shootout of the warehouse that happened in *Live and Let Die*. Though they also gave some some Mr. Big's very terrible traits, his bad guy traits to Robert Saval's character from the film, the one who's the drug dealer. And there's another scene in the book where basically Bond and Solitaire are captured by Mr. Big, tied to the back of his boat, basically totally fed the sharks. Oh, and before they go in the water. Basically, Mr. Big is like, tells his men, stripper. And Solitaire is to completely naked. Yes. In case you're wondering, was this adaptive for a particular film? It was not adaptive for Live and Let Die. They kind of loosely adapt this, but they kind of switch on put like a crane down with a shark. In the films, they did adapt this scene, but for four eyes only. The only difference is they replaced Solitaire with... M Melina Havelock, and Melina Havelock was not completely naked for this particular scene. She was wearing a swimsuit and a white shirt. Well, one of those button-up shirts. Yeah, that's basically what she was wearing. But at least that, well, she was just completely naked. Yeah, and by the way, when, when Bond was on a train with Solitaire, they got a chance to make out, and he's like, I would love to make love to you, but I still got a broken finger in my arm messed up. Yeah, and they kind of teased this the whole novel, the fact that Bond is injured and he can't make love to Solitaire. Eventually, later on, Mr. Big is killed by Bond as sort of part of a revenge scheme. Like, basically kills him in a way out of revenge what he did to Felix Slater. Which, come think of it, they accepted this very plot thread also for License to Kill as well. Yeah. So, Bond gets bit... Apparently, he gets rescued by Quarrel. By the way, Quarrel also, who's in the book, he teaches him how to scuba dive. Basically, cut, cuts down like how many cigarettes he has, and cuts down with smoking. Yep. And there's even some underwear battles in here, which is quite interesting. <clears throat> Actually, it's like one. And eventually, he's after Kanega's boat destroyed, with, with not Kanega, Mr. Big's boat destroyed, they rescue by Quarrel in a freaking canoe. Yes, a canoe. They're taken to shore, and Bond basically takes the time to clean Solitaire. He bathes her. And a normal guy, basically, if a woman doesn't know her very well, probably thinking pervert or whatever, but basically clean her up, and then somehow, and this is really weird, Strangways actually took the time to clean, Mr. clean Jane's Bond. Why the heck they decided to have Strangways do this? Well, the kind of reason is because Bond is injured, he can't clean himself, but he's able to clean the solitaire problem. Yep. The book ends with basically him with solitaire. Not in bed per se, but basically waiting to tease exactly when they're going to basically sleep together. At least when they have sex. And, well, that's the novel. <clears throat> this, in my opinion, is actually really good. Now, in the case of solitaire, how she's picked in here, I'm okay with it. I like her film version a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jane Seymour does a fantastic job playing the character. Now, in the case of Nav, I love all the Smurf stuff in here. The pirate treasure, which they actually have it where the British government can actually feud over the American government over the who owns his treasure. 
And nothing unusual with the fact that Mr. Big is killed in this book. Yeah, nothing unusual there. And, well, yeah. The plot itself is actually really good. The only thing I did not like... There's a few things I didn't like about this book. Um, For one thing, the FBI being very paranoid. And I am, I've never really liked... Uh, the way the FBI are depicted, a lot of times fiction, where they're not nice people and they're basically terrible people to local law enforcement. I have, I know somebody who was a former police chief. Yeah, the way FBI is depicted in fiction, that is completely untrue. The FBI are never depicted this way. They're, they're always willing to work with local law enforcement. In fiction, it's a very antagonistic relationship. It's like, oh, I'm federal agent it means I have control over this thing. Because I have the higher power in real life. It's kind of like that, but not as bad. <clears throat> that was one problem I had in the book. I didn't like that. No, they have images in the book. Uh, another problem. The gibberish talk be between several of the villain characters. Didn't care for that at all. Mr. Big, I thought was a really interesting character. And Teehee, despite the fact he's kind of interesting in the novel... The film basically picks a lot more warmer of a character. This is how sadistic he is. He's much more interesting of a character than he is in the novel. And, yeah. So, all in all, I'll give this book roughly a 9 out of 10. Really good book. I don't recommend this for adults because I highly doubt this book for little kids to read. No, unless you read James Bond Jr. Yep, though I've never read the James Bond Jr. comic book. Or, and I've also never seen the James Bond Jr. cartoon show. Oh, in case you wanted to do any of the characters in this book actually basically appear in other stuff. Well, Baron Samity does. And the Golden Out video game, and also Silver Games in part multiplayer. That's pretty much it. These like the only character that comes back from the movie, come back in the book. Yeah, it's interesting though that they have Baron Sampic as a separate character in the movie, even though in the novel it was an alias of Mr. Big. In the film, Mr. Big is an alias of the main villain of the film, which is fine. And, in case you're wondering, is there any mention of drugs in the book? Nope, that was completely made for the film, and the film was mixed between black exploitation and spy stuff. Yep. So yeah, that's it for this particular review. I have roughly about three, maybe four more videos to do today, and next review I'm going to do is review the newest episode of One Piece. I'm also going to do the newest episode of Barto, the newest chapter of My Hero Academia, and hopefully also the newest chapter of Attack on Titan. Yep. Yeah, just four videos after this, okay? Pretty soon. Next video, which will be soon. We have a newest episode of One Piece. All the news chat the monitor, okay? See you there. Bye.